Hey guys, welcome to the next section of the Getting Started with Spring 5 course. And this section we're going to create the fully reactive web application. So let's start what we will learn exactly. So we will overview the Spring Web Flux. This is actually the new module that was introduced into the latest version of Spring Framework. Then we're also going to take a look at Spring Data and the broad reactive capabilities into this framework. This means that we will be able in the end to create the reactive way to access data from the underneath storages. And finally we will create the fully reactive web application using Spring Web Flux and Spring Data, which means that all interactions within our application will be fully reactive and non-blocking. So let's start with overviewing what is actually the web flux. Under the hood of web flux and actually through the old Spring Framework version 5, there is a reactive contract. And reactive streams was embraced into the Spring Framework as a contract for communicating back pressure across async components and libraries. Reactive Streams is actually a specification that is part of adaptation of Java 9. And Reactor is actually the Spring Source implementation of Reactive Streams specification, which actually allows us to define streams starting from zero to number of elements within the stream. The module by itself contains support for reactive HTTP and WebSocket clients, as well as reactive server web applications including REST, HTML, browser and WebSocket style of interactions. Here we can see the diagram where we can see how actually Spring Web Flux was introduced into the Spring framework. So on the right hand side we have in the middle Spring Web Flux module which relies on HTTP and reactive streams and underneath we have the non-blocking containers which allows us to implement the socket-based communication. At the top we have a controller request mapping and router functions that are leveraged also by Spring Web Flux and Spring Web MVC in order to provide the routing capabilities and mapping of requests to execution of particular methods. As for implementation at the server side, Spring Web Flux provides two ways to achieve this. First one is exactly the same as we used to use in Spring MVC. This is based on controller annotation and other annotations that were within our web applications. Another option is to use the fully functional way where we can provide the handling and routing capabilities based on Java 8 Lambda support. If we are talking about functional programming model to implement web application in WebFlux, we should think about three type of functions. First one is the router functions. This type of function are actually responsible to map a particular endpoint to be executed by a particular function. So these functions are corresponding to the request mapping on the controller class level. Then we have uh, handler functions that are actually responsible to execute some particular business logic. And handler functions are actually the same methods that are annotated with request mapping annotation. And between we have the handler filter function which are able to inject some additional filtering capabilities to our web application and these functions are corresponding to the servlet filters or classes annotated with controller advice annotation. As for the client side, Spring Web Flux provides the functional reactive web client that offers fully non-blocking and reactive alternative to the REST template. It exposes a network input and output as a reactive client HTTP request and client HTTP response, where the body of the request and response is actually a data buffer wrapped into the flux. 
instead of the input stream uh, or output stream correspondingly. In addition, it also supports the JSON and XML and other types at the format of the messages that are exchanging between client and the server. Now let's practically overview what are the ways to create the web applications in the reactive way. In order to do this, let's go to the source code of the section 10 and let's open build.gradle file. So here we have some additional dependencies that we will need as part of our fully reactive web application. And here we have two dependencies, which is the reactor core, which will bring the support of reactive streams as part of the reactor implementation. And then we have a Lattice core, which is actually the fully reactive connection or driver for Redis. And the rest part of our application is still the same, so no new dependencies were introduced. Now let's go to the controller package of our application where we have stock data where controller class. And this class is quite similar to that uh, controller classes we have in previous sections. It is also annotated with REST controller annotation and the request mapping which marks that this controller will produce the JSON and XML formats. Then we have the injection of the Redis implementation of the stock demo and there is a method which is handling the get methods which returns the stock by ID. Then we have the save stock method which handles the put HTTP requests and we have also the new method which actually is implementation of the way how we can actually return more than one object of as part of response. And as we can see the difference comparing to the previous versions of this method, we have actually the response return type as of mono which is wrapping the uh, objects that we are about to return. So as for get info method, we have returned a mono, we, which is wrapping the stock DTO, which means that mono is a reactive stream interface, and we are actually returning the reactive response as part of response from our get info method. And the same we have for find all by IDs, which is actually in its case, it leverages the flux, which is wrapping the stock. In this case, we will return more than one stock information as a reactive stream.